Hello and welcome to day 26 of 30 days of Photoshop. Today we're going to show you how to create a mock-up, creating a realistic image and then applying it to a photo in perspective. Hello and welcome back to 30 days of Photoshop. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're going to show you how to create a realistic mock-up. Now we're going to be doing this in three separate phases. Our first phase is going to be removing graphics from our background photo. We're going to be doing this using the brand new remove tool. In our next phase, we'll show you how to use a smart object so you can actually create your graphic and then apply it into perspective. And in our third phase, we're going to show you how to take the highlights and the shadows of your original photograph and then place them over top of your mockup, helping everything look completely realistic. We have an awesome tutorial for you today. Let's jump into Photoshop. So we're starting off with our background image. Now, the first thing I want to do, let's go to our background layer. We're going to go to our remove tool here. Now with the remove tool, I'm going to make sure generative AI is on. We're going to uncheck remove after each stroke and check create new layer. This is going to allow me to simply highlight over top of the objects that I would like to remove. In this case, we're going to highlight over that guy. Let's click on that little check icon right up there. And it's going to remove this using generative AI. All right, there we go. And that looks pretty good. Next, we're going to go ahead and paint right over here on top of this text. And I want to remove this text, but I want to keep that light in my image. So it's going to help the end result look a lot more realistic. There we go. Let's go ahead and go right over across the top of this text and then hit that checkbox up on the top right. Fantastic. It's removing this area. And then we'll just have one more removal to do as well. So let's go ahead and make our text to, or our brush a little smaller. You can use the open and close brackets to do that. There we go. And let's get this little 17 graphic as well. Fantastic. Hit that checkbox and we should be good to go. Now, if you don't get the exact results that you want, it's totally okay. Just hit undo and you can simply apply that again. All right. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and group all those. We're going to double click and call this remove. Okay. So this looks pretty good. That's phase one of our image done. Cleaning up our background. Phase two is going to be creating a smart object. Now, what I need to do is create a smart object that's going to be the size of this billboard, but I want to do this not in perspective. You can see with this original image here, this billboard is already in perspective. It's a photograph of a billboard. So I need a way to extract the size of this without it being in perspective. So we'll show you a really cool technique on how to do that. Let's simply create a new layer. We're going to be using our lasso tool. So let's hit L for the lasso tool, and we're going to grab the polygonal lasso tool. Now you can do this as an approximation. I'm just gonna click on this corner here. We're gonna click on this corner here, go right about down to here. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go, something like that. Bring this right over here and hit enter. So now I have basically the shape of my background billboard, but it's still in perspective as you can see. So what I need to do is transform this so it's just a basically a regular rectangle. Okay, so here on my new layer, what we're going to do, because I have this selection, I'm going to go to my fill and we're just going to choose to fill this with white and hit deselect right over here. Cool. Now this is filled with white and I want to go ahead and transform this so it looks more like just a regular rectangle with 90 degree corners. Let's hit controller command T and I'm going to bring this right up there. Hit enter controller command T and we're going to bring this right down there and hit enter. Something like that looks pretty good. Okay. Basically just using controller command to make this a little bit more like a regular rectangle. Now, instead of trying to make this a perfect rectangle, what I'm gonna do is use this as a general shape or guideline, and we're just gonna make a new rectangle over top of it. But now I know about the shape of my billboard. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab here our rectangular marquee tool. I'm gonna to click and drag right over top of this mockup. There we go. And we're making our shape here on a new layer. We're just gonna to choose to fill that with white. There we go. Let's hit Control or Command D to deselect and delete our original image. Fantastic. So now what we're left with is basically a rectangle, and this is the shape of our billboard. I'm going to turn this into a smart object. That way I can edit my billboard in a separate file, save it, and it'll automatically update in my composite. Okay, let's go ahead and change this into a smart object. We're going to go to Layer, down to Smart Objects, and over to Convert to Smart Object. Perfect. Now that it's a smart object, I'm going to hit Control or Command T. We're going to go ahead and scale this by holding Control or Command, and I'm going to grab that corner right down here. And I'm going to grab this corner and move this right about to there as well. 
That looks pretty good. And now let's make this invisible real quick. I want a layer mask on this. So let's put a layer mask on there. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my magic wand tool and let's go ahead and hold shift and make a selection. There we go. And select the original billboard. This is looking pretty good. I have my tolerance about 35. Okay, so I've selected my original billboard. What we're gonna do now is inverse that selection, just like this. So now instead of selecting the billboard, it's gonna select everything else, including these lamps and you know this top of the building and things like that. Okay, let's go ahead and turn that billboard back on visible. And I'm gonna click on that layer mask now, and then we're gonna paint black. So B for the brush tool, and we're gonna paint black on the layer mask. And this is gonna simply hide this billboard where we have this selection active, okay? So again, I started off by selecting the billboard itself, then I inverse my selection, and there we go. So now we have a clean slate for our billboard and we're ready for our mock-up. The cool thing here is, remember, because before we started transforming this back into perspective and using a layer mask, I made this a smart object. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like as a smart object. Well, all you have to do is simply double click right here on your layer and you're gonna see it's gonna open it up as my original shape. Again, because remember, I created this rectangle first and then made it a smart object, okay? And any transformations I do to my smart object aren't actually baked to my original shape. So because we made it a smart object first, all I have to do is double click on it and I'll be able to edit what's ever in this smart object. Okay, there we go. So now inside this smart object, we're gonna go ahead and grab my finder. I'm gonna grab another image here and let's just click and drag this right here into this photograph, into this smart object rather. And we're gonna bring this right over here and hit enter. Now on a new layer, I'm gonna hit M for my marquee tool and we're gonna make a selection there and I'm gonna go ahead and go to generative fill and just generate this. Okay, keep in mind, you guys can download all of these sample images, all these assets so you can follow along and kind of see how everything was done. But what we're doing now is basically creating our mock-up image and then all I have to do is hit save and it's going to automatically be placed into my original graphic. Okay, now I already have this text image that I created. So let's go to my layers here. I'm gonna click and drag this text right here into my smart object as well. And something like that looks pretty good. And there we go. So keep in mind this layer .2, layer 2.psb, this is actually my smart object. Remember, it's the same thing that's right over here. So when I hit save on this, all I have to do is hit control or command S to save this. It's gonna automatically update into this document. How cool is that? Okay, because anything that I do inside of this document, let's go ahead and make our text a little bit smaller because anything that I do inside of this document, there we go, let's hit control or command S to save this out. I can now update my design in real time. If I wanna bring this text a little bit higher, hit control or command S to save it it's going to be up there and I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And this is the real benefit for working with your design and the mock-up at the same time, because let's say you were driving by and you wanted to be actually able to read all this text. You know, if I had this really large, like, you know, like it was before, if I had like this and I save this out, it's like, okay, cool. Maybe it looks good in your two dimensional version of your poster. But here on the billboard itself, it's like I can't even read all this stuff and I can't read the dates or anything like that. So maybe saving it out like this is actually a lot better. I can actually read everything. And then over here, maybe I'll just put some clouds. So I'm gonna put a new layer and let's go to our selection brush tool. And I'm just gonna do something like this and something like that. And we'll go to generative fill. I'm gonna just type in clouds, something that is information that we don't actually need, but it's just gonna help our poster look a little bit better. Here we go. And as this generates out, I'll be able to choose through my different clouds so here in my properties panel, cause I'm using generative fill. Yeah, that looks good, a cloud right there. Okay, and here you can see the cloud in my mockup. Fantastic. So basically that's phase one and phase two done. Phase one was just going to our layers and then removing everything from our original. Phase two was creating a rectangle, transforming it and using that as a smart object so I can edit that in a separate file. Now in phase three, I wanna take the shadows and highlights from my original image and then place those over top of my mockup. Okay, so here's how we do this. Basically, I'm just gonna make my mockup invisible for now. We're gonna create a new layer. There we go, fantastic. And on this new layer, what I wanna do is create a snapshot of everything that I see, basically just literally exactly this. 
So we're gonna to go to image and then down to apply image. It's gonna apply the entire image onto this new layer. Now I want this new layer to basically just show up the highlights and the shadows of my billboard on top of the mockup. So what I need to do is first restrict this so it's only visible on the mockup. So how do we do that? Well, we can simply use a clipping mask. We're gonna hold Alt or Option and click between these two layers, which makes a clipping mask. Let's go ahead and turn our billboard back on again. Now this layer three, let's just call this HS for highlights and shadows. Right now, this is just set to a normal blending mode. So it's just gonna look like a normal layer. But if I change the blending mode from normal, let's go ahead and try something like soft light. Now you're gonna start to see some of the original highlights and shadows over top of my billboard. You're gonna see it looks a lot more realistic. If I wanna enhance this a little bit, I can use levels. So let's go ahead and click on this layer. I'm gonna hit Control or Command L for our levels. And then let's go ahead and make our darks a little bit darker. We can work on our lights a little bit here and I can work on my midtones. There we go, something like that. Starts to look pretty good and hit okay. So basically what this is, is a duplicate of my background image placed over top of my mockup. There we go, with a layer set to soft light. And because it's clipped, if I unclip this, this is what it looks like. It'll just affect the entire image. But because this is clipped, it's only being visible exactly where the mockup is visible. So now we have a lot of power within our image and still any changes that I make. So if I decide to go back to this layer, let's go ahead and close this out. We don't need that text anymore either, right? Let's go ahead and save this out. By the way, you're going to be able to download this. So just save this out as a PSC. At any point in time, if you want to edit your actual mockup, all you have to do is double click right here. It's going to open this up into a new, or basically it just opens it up as a smart object. There we go. Let's go ahead and uh, change that, save it out. And you can see it changes that shape. So there we go. Let's go ahead and move this right over here. Controller command S to save this out. And there we go. It's saved out and looks really, really good. So by working this as a smart object, it just gives me so much flexibility and it allows me to actually edit because you really don't want to be creating your mock-up. Like if I had, you know, this Ferris wheel and the clouds and the text and stuff, if I was trying to like completely edit all that, like create this all in perspective, it would be so much work and it would be a pain and everything would be a slightly different perspective. The workflow would be a nightmare. But because we're using a smart object here, I can design this in two dimensions, make any changes that I want. There we go. Let's go ahead. Maybe I would just want to duplicate this cloud. There we go. Let's change this from normal down to screen. Well, <laughs> instead of duplicating the cloud, let's just use AI to just generate a new cloud. There we go and hit enter. I'm able to design this in a two dimensional workspace. Any changes that I make, totally cool. And then all I have to do is save it out and it'll automatically update into my mockup. So there we have a couple clouds we can, <laughs> let's choose the more realistic cloud. That looks good. Save that out and here you can see it updates into my mockup in perspective and with highlights and shadows over top of it. And that's how we create a realistic mockup in Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and we'll see you tomorrow for more 30 days Photoshop. Bye everyone.